understanding of civil society work in China is very different from that in Europe. While we in Europe look at NGOs as kind of watchdogs or monitoring agency, often in opposition to our governments or our economical actors, in China NGOs see themselves as more in a cooperative relationship with government institutions. Despite this different understanding of what civil society should do, partnerships between civil society organizations in China and Europe have emerged. One example is our EU-China NGO twinning program. We bring together civil society organizations from Europe and China to work together on issues like climate change, social and environmental justice. The recent years have brought a change in the spheres of China, also in the civil society sphere, and thereby reduced their ability to cooperate globally. This was especially seen in 2017, when a new law regulating the work of international NGOs in China has been implemented. We can consider this law of 2017 as a way to securize NGO cooperation because all corporations have to be reported to the Ministry of Public Security. Many organizations from Europe consider this new mode of engaging in civil society dialogue not to be on an uh, equal level. Many topics have fallen off the table of NGO cooperation. At the China program of Stiftung Eisenhaus, we work intensively to keep a constructive dialogue between civil societies alive and to identify contents of cooperation for civil society organizations from Europe and China. Civil society dialogue with China is especially important in times of political confrontation. Personal meetings and experiences open a different perspective on the Chinese society, which is a lot more pluralistic and open to the world and global than media often shows it. It is important to realize that we work on the same global issues, both in Europe and in China, and that we see the Chinese society and Chinese civil society actors not as a homogeneous um, sphere that is entirely controlled by the party and the Chinese state. Civil society dialogue with China can surmount systemic limits and borders. We can find topics of cooperation and identify them beyond what kind of political framework we are working in. Therefore, it's very important to look for answers to global challenges together, like climate change, fighting against uh, poverty, or the very unjust global economical situations we are facing. At the same time, of course, we have to look at the legal framework of this sphere of cooperation. And it's important to identify the right cooperation partners um, on both sides. The context of civil society cooperation with China has definitely worsened since the 2017 law on the regulation of activities of overseas um, civil society organizations in China. However, civil society space in China as well as in the whole world is shrinking. It may start with an NGO being called not to the benefit of the people anymore and it can go to imprisonment and even murder. We've seen this happening and there's a rise in these incidents all over the world. Therefore, civil society actors need to strengthen each others. We need to connect, we need to find constructive dialogue space, we need to open it up 
only in this manner we can make sure that there is a humane, a socially just and an ecological development happening. And we can meet in a space that is open when we're, where we are all equal. We can exchange strategies and methods and thereby strengthen and make our voices as civil society heard in the global discourse that is happening.